Hello guys, Winston here. If you couldn't guess from the pre-roll, this week's video has something to do with Inventables. A couple weeks ago, they approached me to do a product review, and since I'd been looking to upgrade my spindle from a 140 watt Dremel 395 Moto tool from the 1990s to something with a little bit more power, they hooked me up with a quiet cut spindle care package. I'll put a list of what was included in the box in the video description section, but the star of the show is of course the 300 watt quiet cut spindle which starts at $80 excluding the power supply and other accessories. A full kit with the requisite electronics and extra collets will put you in the neighborhood of $200. If you already have things like power cords and heat shrink tubing, you can definitely get that cost below the $200 mark. Before I do anything with the kit though, I want to talk about some of the other spindle options I'd been mulling over before Inventables made their timely offer. After all, no review is meaningful unless you can frame it in the context of its competitors. The Shapeoko Wiki has a table of common spindle options, and the two that I'd had my eye on were the Dremel 4000 and DeWalt DW660. Both can be had for under $100. Although the Dremel 4000 is only rated for 192 watts, it has an advantage over a lot of other rotary tools because it has a built-in electronic speed controller. This means that it should maintain RPM better at low speeds where rotary tools have traditionally had abysmal torque. It also has a continuously variable output between 5000 and 35000 RPM, whereas most cutout tools in other routers only have a handful of discrete settings, sometimes with just as few options as high and low. Speaking of few speed options, the DW660 was also on my radar mostly because of its 600 watt power output. The other redeeming feature was that you can fit it with a quarter inch collet, but it's definitely a step back from an acoustic standpoint and the lack of speed control was kind of a disappointment for me because I felt it would make it more difficult to work with plastics. On the topic of plastics, I want to clarify something I said in a previous video. A low spindle RPM isn't the only way to machine materials like acrylic. It's the combination of spindle speed and feed rate that affect the quality of the cut. You want to take the right size bite out of your material per revolution of the bit. So while you can use a high RPM spindle to machine plastic, you'd better be able to move your cutter at a complementary speed. On a Shapeoko 2 with NEMA 17 stepper motors, your acceleration profile can't be too aggressive. Coming out of corners or turns, you're going to spend a lot of time at undesirable feed rates. This is why I find it easier to run my spindle at lower RPMs for plastic. You can buy speed controllers for cutout tools and routers to slow them down. They're effectively heavy duty potentiometers, but your torque curve and speed response tend to get messed up a lot. And another problem with most routers is that they use proprietary collets, which usually start at a quarter inch bore. Without an adapter or expensive third party collet, that pretty much renders my cheap collection of cutting bits useless. The collet issue is what actually kept me thinking about the quiet cut spindle. When I was hanging out in a machine shop over the winter, I was using ER16 collets in a giant Haas CNC. I really liked the standardized nature of the ER collet system and the fact that you can get them for so many different shank sizes. The quiet cut uses ER11As, which you can find on Amazon for shank sizes anywhere between 1 to 7 millimeters. That's basically up to a quarter inch. Now if you want to save a little money, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that there are Chinese versions of the QuietCut spindle that you can get on eBay for a little bit less. The only downsides are that you usually have to source a few additional components elsewhere, you're pretty much at the mercy of the cheapest Hong Kong post office shipping speeds, and you have pretty much no customer service options available to you. The last one concerns me the most because on the off chance the spindle is dead on arrival or burns out after just a few hours of use, you're SOL. This point is actually illustrated by a purchase I made specifically for this video. I bought a Chinese made soldering iron, which you'll see later on, that was highly reviewed. But were it not for Amazon's awesome customer service, I'd be stuck with a product that was blatantly damaged on arrival. Had this been an eBay purchase through some generic Asian vendor, I'd be lucky to get a replacement within a month, if ever. So at this point in my market research, I was honestly leaning towards the Dremel over the DeWalt 660 and trying to push the QuietCut spindle to the back of my mind because I wasn't ready to spend over twice as much on a system I had no point of reference for. I knew how Dremels worked, I had a 395 and a 3000 even, so I expected the 4000 to be a moderate improvement over that. And then, well, Inventables stepped in and offered to let me play with a QuietCut spindle, which I couldn't refuse. For those of you who haven't already beaten me to a spindle upgrade like this, here's my honest experience and impressions on this product. Before I did anything with the QuietCut spindle, I first looked over some of the, well, kind of boring instructional videos on the Inventables YouTube channel. The wiring you need to do is pretty simple. Power cord goes to power supply, power supply goes to the speed controller, speed controller goes to the spindle, with a relay interrupting the positive lead. If you'd like all that information a little slower and with diagrams, check out the Inventables walkthrough. To connect everything, you'll need to do a little soldering first. You'll need to extend the wires coming off the spindle. I got a couple rolls of stranded 18 gauge wire from my local radio shack, may you forever rest in peace, and soldered that in line with the spindle leads. 
I put a length of heat shrink tubing over the connections to strengthen and insulate the solder joints. In order to clean up the wiring a little bit more, I turned to expandable sleeving, and this time I did it right, terminating the ends with heat shrink. This would protect the wires from abrading on any of the mechanical bits of the CNC. If I could do it again, I'd probably buy another foot of sleeving just to protect the wiring until it left the enclosure. Mounting the quiet cut spindle to your Shapeoko is pretty foolproof. Just use the stock mounting blocks and tighten down on the straps as necessary. You may need to lower the Z-axis maker slide by about an inch so that the shorter end mills can reach the wasteboard. For the relay, I added some more headers to my G-Shield giving me access to 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and ground. The latter two are the only ones you'll need plus the spindle enable control signal from the digital pins. You should actually be able to hear the relay activating when the control signal is held high. Now if you're using gerbil 0.8 or 0.9 without modification, the spindle enable signal will be on pin 12. You should be able to turn the quiet cut spindle on and off from your G-code center of choice using the M3 and M5 commands. However, if you've enabled variable spindle PWM, which I have because it's required for the lasering module, this won't work. Instead of a high-low signal to denote spindle on and off, the spindle control is managed using a pulse width modulated signal sent via pin 11. This is because the Arduino only has 6 PWM capable pins, and pin 12 just isn't one of them. Instead of using the relay circuit, you can either use a manual switch and control spindle speed with a potentiometer, or send the PWM signal directly to the speed controller. I'll show the latter variation in a future video. I opted for analog speed control because I'm not confident enough with my feeds and speeds to declare a set spindle RPM in my G-code. I'd rather be able to change it on the fly. With the relay bypassed, I could now start using my QuietCut spindle. Now I know a lot of you have already experienced this firsthand, so what I'm about to say may not seem all that groundbreaking, but having started out using a Dremel on my Shapeoko, the noise reduction of the QuietCut spindle is a wonderfully welcome change. In my case, I saw an almost 50% reduction in noise amplitude, and the sound profile of the spindle itself is a lot less obnoxious. The collet system is also rock solid and simple. Just snap the collet into the retaining nut, insert your end mill, and screw it onto the spindle. The runout is also really low. I did a quick job on my upgraded Shapeoko, and the spindle managed to claw its way through 3 quarter inch plywood without a problem. On my old Dremel, the friction alone at the bottom of the cut would have kept me hovering over the kill switch in case the machine got stuck or skipped a step. Here, I felt comfortable enough to take a step back and eat dinner while my Shapeoko chugged away. Overall, I'm really pleased with QuietCut Spindle. The price to performance ratio may not be for everyone, but if you live in an apartment or share a living space with other people, I think it's worthy of consideration. Do I think the upgrade kit is perfect? No. I wish there was an easy way to clean up all the wiring and enclose all of the discrete parts. I'll probably end up having to fabricate some sort of custom box with weird mounting brackets to accommodate things like this giant heatsink. But given what I know now, would I spend my own hard-earned money on this kit? I would say likely yes. In my particular situation, the lack of outright power compared to something like the DW660 is outweighed by the acoustic performance and flexible collet system. That about wraps it up for this video. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in a couple weeks with the first project made on my upgraded Shapeoko.